Welcome to Binge or Purge Streaming Reviews. I am your host, Demo. My co-host is Joe Taylor. This is episode 57. Man, I'm happy to have you here. I'm happy to be back. Good. It sounds like, you know, we're you guys are just here, but for us, it's been a little while since we've seen each other. So you work from home a lot. I work from home a lot. Yeah. So when like four or five days goes by and you don't see another human, that's that's tough. It does so. feel like a long time. Hopefully that's over soon and we can all get back to... Uh, being around people we don't really want to see anyway, but... Uh, That's know. how you know it's over, when you start seeing people you didn't want to see. You know? Oh, this guy? Ugh. Yeah, we got a lot, man. We have tons, tons. I want to start off with some news, all right? Okay, good. What do you got? A couple shows that we both said were binges have been canceled. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds right. Okay, uh, spinning out that ice skating one that you liked... Yeah. Okay. You gave it a bit. Yeah. 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 I looked yeah, back. Okay, okay. I mean, it's not like you're, you weren't looking forward to season two, but you said it was fine. Anyway, not to worry. It's gone. Okay. Not coming back. Netflix said no. Fine. And then Netflix said no to a show that I really enjoyed for a second season, and that is Marianne, that French horror show. Oh, with the doll or whatever? No, with the witch. Oh, the witch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was really freaky. Now, even though it's not coming back for a second season, I still think you can watch the first season and be thoroughly entertained and enjoy it for what it is. I want to point out real quick that you did like a nine minute review on that show. And I said, oh, yeah, the one with the doll. Yeah. <laughs> there's, well, no doll. You, there's no doll. There's no. Sometimes I, know, you I don't check out. any of this stuff. Sometimes. Okay. But, but here's the real big news that just came out. One of our all time favorite shows on here that's on YouTube Premium is leaving YouTube Premium and going to Netflix. Have you heard about this yet? No, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Cobra Kai. Is going to Netflix? Yes. Season three will premiere on Netflix at the end of the year. No official dates have been released yet, but Netflix is going to start streaming seasons one and two soon so that everyone's ready for season three. So bye-bye YouTube Premium. And now YouTube Premium has no original scripted content anymore. Well, why would they? Okay, I'm trying to stifle myself because I want you to finish your thought. Go ahead. No, that's it. Okay, number one, we could probably get one of the producers of that show on here because he's friends with Chris. Number two, why would YouTube have any original content that you have to pay for ever? Because that's the opposite of their business model. And number three... When are they planning on shooting this thing? Because if it's not already in the can, it's not oh, going to be out for another done. year. It's done. They shot it a long time ago. How long ago? Oh, way before the coronavirus. Way before. Okay. Our Twitter account follows them. So I see oh, yeah. updates and they're like, you know, season three is in the can. So they're just, you know, waiting around. And I guess they was working on this deal to take it to Netflix. The point is, I don't know anybody that's watched it that doesn't love it. If you even mildly like The Karate Kid, you should watch this. And now everybody and their mother can watch it because it's on Netflix. How much did Netflix pay for that? I have no idea. Billion dollars? Probably. It's a great show. It's a great show. I'm very happy that everyone's going to get to see it now because I know people are like, YouTube, what? So we will let you know when season one and two are available and then when the release date for season three is. A listener actually texted me today going, oh my God, I, I know you guys told me a long time ago to watch this. I just started watching season one yesterday and I love it. It's a fantastic show. It really is. We've said that after both seasons. Honestly, you're surprising me right now, which I know that. Right? I was like, like it's, it's, a ha- it's happy news. Good. Hooray! Thank you. Cobra Thanks, Kai, Demo. Netflix. Woo! Thank you. I do get surprised a lot. It's usually not good news. Right. Thank you for that. I appreciate right. That's it. That's all I got for news. Okay. I had one thing I wanted to mention real quick, which is Uncut Gems, we talked about very briefly. Yes. Because it was nominated for like Oscars and stuff, even it though was it was not nominated for any Oscars. It was nominated for everything else. Independent Spirit Awards, all that stuff. Okay. It got no Golden Oscar Globes. nods. Golden Globes. Nope. It was not nominated for any Golden Globes either. You made a comment about the Safty Brothers acceptance speech, which is totally right on, which is these guys are sadists. 
when it comes to filmmaking. But you know what? I happened to watch it again on Netflix the other night just for fun because I've already been through it one time. It wasn't so hard to watch the second time. Uh And you know what? I'm excited for what they do next because I think they found this like voice, kind of like Quentin Tarantino or somebody who has like, even if you don't like it, at least you can watch five minutes of their movie and know who made it. Yeah, they have a distinct vision. Yeah. Great. It's a vision I don't want to see, though. I, I gotta hated this movie. I truly <laughs> did. It's the most unpleasant thing I watched oh, in it's 2019. Unpleasant. Yeah. yeah, it's super I find unpleasant. nothing redeeming about it. Every character is frustrating, and you just... I don't want to be around them. And I get, that's the point, man. That's who these people are. And then I, everybody's, you know, all these, you know, sycophants for this movie that come out of the woodwork and tell me how I totally missed the boat. And that's the point. Guess what? I don't care. I get the point of the movie. I don't like it. Okay. I'm letting you know every, right now, everyone, I don't give a shit about uncut gems. Okay, did you see Good Time with Robert Pattinson? No, I didn't. I okay. hear that's like more of the same, right? Well, it's almost exactly the same, but Ugh. that's their whole thing is just freaking people out for two hours. They didn't freak me out. They just annoyed me. Yeah. All right? Well, I'm that's sorry. Worse. That's worse. It was too long. I'm sorry. I'm done with this movie. Let's move on. Okay. I'm done. All right. Speaking of things that are too long, I'm kidding. This is super short. <laughs> In fact, this is only 27 minutes long, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. It is Dave Chappelle's new stand-up special, I guess, 846. Yeah. Now, I know you watched it. I know I watched it. 25 million people have watched it on YouTube as of this recording. And it's all him talking about George Floyd and everything that happened. Here's what I think about it. I like that he, he went out and he spoke, but it's a workshop. It's not a stand-up special. Oh, oh. I mean, he's he's literally going up on stage with his notebook in his hand that he, like, opens it, closes it, plays around with it. I mean, it's so all over the place. Do you film a workshop? Okay. Or don't you... Sorry. Or just don't no. you wait until you've got all your thoughts together and then you, you put it in a one hour and it destroys? I have a lot of comments. I don't know which one to pick. Number one, he filmed it at his house. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was a workshop, but it was just him doing stand up in his literally his own backyard in Ohio or wherever he lives. Yep. Second of all, I think if you're him, no, you don't wait any longer than you absolutely have to cuz I think he felt the need to jump on this thing. Right. So, I get that. Stand up special, we could throw that around pretty loosely cuz it was very much a uh TED talk. It was like a sermon almost. Sermon's perfect word. There right? you go. And I didn't mind it. I thought everyone should watch it. I just found it interesting that it's like, it's a Netflix special, but you can only watch it on YouTube. Okay. Can we start there? Yeah. Why? Why? Because Netflix has their own YouTube page. I know the technicality. I know that what you're saying but is But why true. not put it on Netflix? Yes. Maybe they just wanted it to see like, you know, hey, get it out there as quick as possible. And I get, YouTube's quicker than Netflix? I have no idea. It makes no sense to me. I can see putting it on both because, oh, well, not everyone has Netflix. Okay, fine. So put it on YouTube also, but why YouTube only? I don't know. Okay. Anyway, can you describe to people what this thing is real quick? He goes out, candles are lit. Looks like, you know, where he has like, uh, you know, his barbecue set up. He's got like a little gazebo thing and he talks about George Floyd and everything going on in the world. And you want to get this from him. So I do see your point about like, Let's get him out there right now, and this is how he would do it. I feel like he felt the moment is now to strike, but I feel yeah. like a yeah. year from now, he no. really will have it. Like, yeah. he will have worked it, and it'll be an amazing bit, and it'll be deep. Not that this wasn't deep, but I'm saying, like, it's just interesting to me to see someone fleshing out their ideas and showing it to the world when normally all you get to see is the final product. I understand what you're saying Mm -hmm. as a quote, I'm doing air quotes, comic. As a comic, I understand what you're you're saying. Unfortunately, a year from now, would this be relevant? Wouldn't there be a million other things that have happened between now and then that people would have moved on? Yes. Sadly. Yeah, I I guess I'm caught between the relevance of it right now, which I totally agree, get it out there, versus like a stand-up special and how you would present it. Well, yeah, and he didn't exactly pitch it as a stand-up special. In fact, he said, normally I wouldn't show you something this unrefined. That was the first words out of his mouth on the show. He did throw in some good jokes. Yeah. Including the thing about the Dorner. Sorry, I forget his first name. 
Christopher Dorner. Where he goes, I saw the manifesto. I don't need anything from you. Is there anything I can do to help you? Which is what he said to the L.A. cops because, you know. Right. The guy that went nuts was a big fan of his, apparently. Yeah. Not super funny, but sort of true, though, I guess. It was interesting. Let me put it this way. It was never boring. Everything he was saying was interesting and his take on it. So, look, 25 million people have seen this already. If you haven't, like I said, it's only 27 minutes, and it is about everything we are dealing with right now. It's a definite binge. It is Dave Chappelle's 846. Okay, one more thing, and then I'll hit the button. Okay. It it was astonishingly not political. I mean, it it was, but it it didn't... It was human. It was not, like, take. he he certainly didn't take a side. I I mean, he just talked about what was going on, and so if you're like, oh... I thought he took a side on some things. uh, Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, he made a point, but he didn't call people out for this or that. He just kind of said, here's what's happening. We should all talk about it. I thought it was very fair. I guess that's... That's the number one word I would use to describe this thing is fair. And then the second word is um, poignant. And the third word would be funny. And the fourth word would be binge. Binge. (laughs) That was a long way to go to tell people that a uh, Dave Chappelle special is worth watching. I know. I think we probably lost some people on there. But hey, come back. We got a show to do. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. I have a a show that came to us from a listener, listener Pat. Yeah. He's been hitting us up a lot. We're finally uh, doing one that he suggested. It is Into the Night, a Netflix original show by way of Belgium. Now, we both watched this, yes? Yeah. I I was going to wait until you were done to interject, but you do your thing first. Okay. Six episodes. They average about 37 minutes apiece. Super easy to speed through. You can literally fly through this show. No pun intended. Now, do you want to talk about what it's about? Okay. You want to do this in front of everyone? Because here's the thing. I saw a listener Pat's message long before you did. Watched this. Asked you if you'd seen it. You said no. And I said I was going to get to it. And I did. Okay. I'm just saying I'm the one who watched it first. That's You all. did. And it's in Belgium. It's Belgium. not in Belgium. It's in French, you fool. <laughs> well, there's no so, Belgian I, language. <laughs> well, that's they, on them. They're speaking French, and the other two official languages are um, Dutch and German. Okay, but whatever it is, it was very real to watch, and it was very well done. I loved this thing, but go ahead, do your thing. Okay, you, you act like you're the one who watched it first. Go ahead. You give the premise. No. Go for it. No, because I, I, I'm too lazy right now. You do it. Uh, there's some catastrophic global event where the sunlight kills people. And so this group of, I don't know, it's like a dozen people get on a plane and they have to fly west to avoid the sun because the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So they're constantly traveling west to stay in the night. That sounds right. They're flying west constantly and they can't stop. And it's, what'd you say? It's it's six episodes. I thought it was more than that. No, six episodes. Oh, okay. Anyway, it's great, but go ahead. Well, it's it's sort of like Lost meets Speed. You ever get that vibe? Like they that's have, an it, interesting analysis. Yeah. Okay. Every episode starts out with a little like prologue of a character and their life before they got on the airplane. Now it doesn't jump back and forth. You just get that little glimpse into their life at the beginning of every episode, and then it's just them on the plane and you know these people's character dynamics and everything. It turns in like like I said, Speed, where they really can't stop. They can pull over, fuel up in some countries, but they got to keep moving or they're dead. And there's a lot of plot holes and issues and logic problems. Who cares? Forget it. Just have fun with this. This is a fun show. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Like I said, no pun intended. You can fly right through this. I did it in one night. Yeah. Right. And I'm hoping it's coming back for a second season. It sure sets up itself like it's coming back for a second season. Though I did read a spoiler because it's based on a book that says, I'm not going to ruin it for anybody, that says where these characters are headed. And I was like, oh no, that can't be where this story is going. I hope they do something else with it because where this book takes these characters that it's based on is ridiculous. But we'll see. 
Anyway, I want to thank listener Pat, though, for this recommendation. Seriously, it's a great recommendation. Yeah. This thing has been around for, since 2015, and they finally developed it into American television. And you know what? It's better than freaking Lost was. I'll give them that. It's you a think good... so? Yes. It's a lot simpler than Lost. Yes. And it's a much more straightforward story, and there's not nearly as many characters. But I don't yeah. know. I mean, look at this was fun, plain and simple. Like I said, don't expect like the greatest show ever. But if you want something different, you're like, oh, I'm sick of watching Get this, man. Totally worth watching. I, I loved this thing. And honestly, I, I hate stuff with subtitles, as you know. I know you do. I hate stuff you had, that you listener listen Pat. to the Belgian. Yeah. And I hate stuff that listener Pat recommend. What was the last thing he recommended? I don't know. You- Home run, Pat. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Anyway, what else you want us to say? Into the Night, Netflix original series. It's a binge. I want to touch base on something. The Politician Season 2. Now, I reviewed Politician Season 1. This is the Ryan Murphy. First thing he did on Netflix. I reviewed this into the ground. So I just want to do a quick update on Season 2. And we should mention you loved it. Yeah, Oh, yeah, for sure. And I love Ryan Murphy because like the Safdie brothers, even if you don't love him, you have to admit that he has a... He's got his own style. He's got a timbre. Yeah. Like a tone. Sure. Season two was... (laughs) I wrote this down. I couldn't wait to tell you this. It was like watching the dailies from Cats without the VFX. (laughs) Really? Yeah, it was just very Broadway. Like Bette Midler's in it, which I actually wrote. I wrote a note. I said, sing. Don't okay. sing that. Okay. Focus. Listen, there's no need to dissect this thing, okay? Because it's just a very uh, season two Ryan Murphy show. I mean, it, it's exactly what you expect. It's very Broadway. It's very, hey, 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 hey. That was my Bette Midler impression. That's your Bette Midler? Yeah, it's pretty good. <sighs> it was all of that. Now, here's the thing about this. It's only seven episodes, 45 minutes-ish each. Interesting that it's seven episodes. I always wonder when something's at like an odd number. What's the big deal? It's concise, to the point. Well... I don't want ten episodes and you get all this filler. Yeah, okay. Just tell well, your story. Okay, seven even seemed like a little much, to be honest with you. But whatever, it is what it is. It gets better exponentially by the episode. By the end of the season, it was a lot better than the beginning. The first three episodes, I didn't love very much, but... Anyway, I feel like we had to just mention it because it's Ryan Murphy. It's Netflix. It's the biggest Netflix deal ever done to a showrunner. Right. But my question is, how is it comparing to season one for you? Considering how much you thoroughly love season one, is this a disappointment? Didn't love it. Liked it. Okay. I mean, what do you want me to say? I, I, you know? Give a verdict here. Let's move on. It, is it a binge or a purge? Well, it's something. So. Oh my God! I, it's you we know don't what? have something. It's not binge or purge or something. It's one <laughs> or the other. Fine. You know what? It's a binge. Great. Thank you. Okay. Now you have something that I know you've been waiting for for a long time. Yes. Go ahead. I waited for all the episodes to air. This is on Disney Plus, and I'm like. Do I still have Disney Plus? I checked. I still do. Yeah, because I use your login. I know you do. Are you logging in on my thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's (laughs) fine. No, it's cool. It's cool. By the way, I'm the Darth Vader icon. Yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Anyway, this is Disney Gallery, The Mandalorian. It's eight episodes. They average just under a half an hour each, and it's the making of The Mandalorian. Which we gave a wild binge. We did. It was a fantastic show. Well, I had issues with it overall, but I still think it's definitely watchable. Yeah. This series is great because it covers everything of how they made it. Now, the big question is, which episode's got Baby Yoda in it? So I'm going to tell you right now, if you want to get your Baby Yoda fix, you watch episode five called Practical. That's the one. If, you, if you're like, I can't watch all of it, I don't have time. But if you want Baby Yoda, episode five, they cover it. You know everything about it. And also, never, ever is he called Yoda. He's called the baby. Constantly the baby. Never once is Yoda mentioned. And I know some of the listeners are like, you keep calling him Baby Yoda and he isn't. Shut up. I know. I know the deal, okay? But I'm calling him Baby Yoda for reference, okay? Can I interject real quick? Yeah. 
when you say practical, will you explain to people who maybe aren't filmmakers what practical means? Because that that is kind of the crux of the whole episode, which is the most interesting thing about Star Wars. Can you please elaborate? I'm going to go outside and start smoking. Okay. It just means things that are in camera, like they're on set. They're practical effects, meaning they live in a, in a, a three-dimensional space. They're real things. They're not digital. They're not going to be thrown in in post. It's basically what's on set that day and how they get it to work. An example would be puppets, models, yes. props. That's practical. The episode before was technology, and that covered you know how they shoot this thing. And I think that was – you were loving that, right? Well, yeah. So I don't know how many of our listeners give a crap about filmmaking, but there is technology elements of The Mandalorian that made it both more – practical and more technologically advanced at the same time, which yes. is insane, which is great. Yeah. Also, I mean, it's really making a, a special effects feature like this doable in the future. They're using a technology that it, it's going to come down in price and people are going to be able to shoot whatever they want in any kind of environment in a much easier way based on how they're making this show. Okay. So probably my favorite movie of all time is, I'm pointing at you. Swingers. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Swingers. <laughs> right? It's just fun to point at you I sometimes. know. I know. John uh, Favreau. Yeah, yeah. How far he's come, right? Well, thank you. Exactly. And um, and Ron Livingston, too. But no, mostly John Favreau. But <laughs> uh, the thing about John Favreau is that when you hear him talk about making a Star Wars TV show or a Marvel movie... He talks about it like it's swingers. He's like, how can we do this the most efficient way possible? Not cheapest necessarily, but efficient. Right. And I love that about him. And so watching this thing, I'll be honest with you, man. This is one of the favorite things I've watched all year. It's fascinating. As a filmmaker, you, you absolutely have to watch this. Yeah. If you're a filmmaker or a Star Wars fan, you got to watch it without yeah. question. I will say this, though. I found the first two episodes a little masturbatory. <laughs> well what were you doing while you were watching well that? I, oh that's right <laughs> that was me it's a, a self-fulfilling <laughs> prophecy <laughs> i'm just saying it was so like you know bryce dallas howard telling her how she feels about star wars and and all the directors like oh what a thrill it is to be working on star wars and what it means to them it's only when they get into like how they're making the show that it really kicks off. Now, I also want to yeah, yeah, for me. But for, I also yeah. want to say in the third episode, there's a special appearance by our friend Stephen Jackson. Oh, really? <laughs> He's in one shot. I texted him like, "Dude, I just saw you in the making of the Mandalorian." He goes, huh. "You did?" He's shaking hands with uh, Pedro Pascal. <laughs> And I'm like, okay. yeah, it goes, oh, I guess I got to watch it now. Anyway, Good he was a stand-in on the show. He was in the suit a couple times. He's got one second of footage where you can see Are you see waiting for face. me to jump in for something here? Because I'm no, not going no, to. No, okay. no, no. Okay. But I do want to say also, the last episode, episode eight, mm, if you are a Star Wars fan, you got to watch that. It is just nuggets and nuggets of like, you know, fan service and trivia and everything they took from the original trilogy to try to incorporate it and the homages and the little tricks. Episode eight is for the true Star Wars geek. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. If you can find your way out of the locker that you've been in since high school, go watch that. <laughs> um, but you know what? On a totally different angle, as a filmmaker, required viewing the whole thing. It's so good and so um, insightful into, I mean, look, Star Wars came out, what, 1977 was the first one, right? Yes. So they shot it in 76 or 75. They were doing stuff that hasn't been done, I mean, for decades even since then. Well, that's the thing about Star Wars movies. No matter what era you're talking about, even the prequels, they're all using cutting edge technology to tell their story. Whether they're effective or not, I'm not going to get into the prequels or anything, but Every Star Wars movie is pushing the technology. And you would yeah. think, oh, it's a TV show. Like, what really could they be doing? They're doing things that have never been done before. Stuff that Favreau learned on, like, The Lion King, and he incorporates that. And it's fascinating how they're making stuff. And like you said earlier, a good mix of advancing technology and then still using, like, puppets and simple props. Like, when we say puppets, we're... Just actual literal puppets. That's all, that's all Baby Yoda is. They said there's a couple digital versions of him, but he's mostly puppets. Yeah. I, I got to mention one last thing. <laughs> I know, because I'm, I'm nerding out here. Okay, 
Dave Filoni, he's he's a giant Star Wars nerd. He's executive producer of the show. Him and Favreau run it. They start talking about their Star Wars toys growing up and how they're using figures in their show that like no one ever played with, like an Ugna, you know, it's like and he called oh, yeah, them yeah. he called them peg warmers. And I had never heard that reference before, and I think it's genius. Now you probably don't get it, but every Star yeah. Wars figure yes, get, yeah. you know what it is? Yeah. They sit on pegs. Right, so he's called these characters peg warmers because I never got played with. Yep. Anyway, I love that reference. I'm glad you get it. Look at, like I said, it's a treat for Star Wars fans and filmmakers. It's easy to get through eight episodes. Disney Gallery, The Mandalorian. It's a total binge. So, what are you looking forward to, man? I got nothing. Okay, so I'm looking forward to something. Um, we're going to have a guest on our next episode. We are. Yeah, this woman named Laura Summers who wrote and directed or co-wrote and directed a movie called Rich Kids. Which, which is now streaming on Netflix. Streaming on Netflix. I heard about it through Film Independent and I watched it and I think you've watched it. I've watched it. Okay, so we'll talk about it. Um, when we interview her. Yeah. Perfect timing. So that should be fun. And then also we need to talk to uh, Just the Facts. Speaking of Ryan Murphy. Right. We got to talk about Hollywood. We do. We will. Which she was in. She's in it. We've all been. We've been in our down. own worlds. I've put it on the back burner. I'm going to watch the whole show. I'm going to watch Jess's episode. We're definitely going to interview her in some capacity, right? Yeah. I'll try not to get my hopes up. All right. So, kind of a tricky recap because we talked very briefly about Uncut Gems, which was not on the agenda. Chappelle, 846. The uh, new stand-up special, it's only on Netflix's YouTube channel, and it's a binge. Into the Night, a Belgium show on Netflix, binge. Politician Season 2. Hey, if you've watched the first one, just keep going. Why not? The Mandalorian making of... Now, this is called... Uh, Dis- Disney Gallery, The Mandalorian. Thank you. On Disney+. Plus. Yes, definite binge, especially if you're interested in the making of movies of any kind. But th- these guys are so cool. And uh, they really let you into the the behind-the-scenes stuff. It's very comprehensive. Yeah, it's great. A lot of good stuff this week. Yeah, a lot of... I mean, seriously, Into the Night, Disney Gallery, and Dave Chappelle's special, all total binges. Yeah, so there you go. I feel like we... This is two episodes. Can we just cut it in half? We should. I wish. I'm sure listeners are like, make it stop. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make it stop. As always, we want to thank Just the Facts. You can follow Just the Facts on Instagram at the Jesse Greer. That's Jesse with a Y. So for Joe Taylor, my name is Demo. This has been Binge or Purge Streaming Reviews. Thank you so much for listening, and we will see you next time.